I have started the recording. This is the Design 350 Lab. It's for Wednesday. And what we're really going over today is drafting skills. And it's a review, we hope. And uh, you can use any software you want, so long as you get the output right. So if you use Dynascape or Landcad or Revit or AutoCAD or SketchUp, I don't really care, but um, we've got AutoCAD on our VMware, so I'm going to be doing AutoCAD. And AutoCAD is sort of our building block, so I'm going to be going over that. And this is our lab today. On Monday, we did equipment setup of the survey equipment. Today, we'll go over these basic drawing principles. And Friday will be another day to do the um, setup, equipment setup. So if you are here or would like to be here to physically set up the equipment, the survey equipment on Friday, we'll be able to do that then. Okay, so this is just demo time. So let me go ahead and get started and and do the demo. First of all, I've logged into VMware. You can see that's that's what it looks like. I'm on VMware and I've opened up AutoCAD. When you're on VMware, just know a few things. One, I've got all of my my bookmarks up, so I'm going to turn those off cuz it confuses me. That's a little bit easier for me, but I do have two toolbars at the bottom. And I have to remember this bottom one is for my native host computer. And this top one is for my uh, work in, in VMware. So I can get confused between my two SNP tools and where I am in Chrome and things. So there's a little bit of thinking that goes along there. Okay. The other thing to know is when you open up the My Computer, you should have a W number drive. That's where you store your work. Okay. You can get to that. At any time, it stays there throughout the whole semester. If you save it anywhere else, on your desktop or anything like that, it will be gone. Okay. Of course, I strongly suggest that you also upload to your Google Drive. So I'm going to also open up my Google Drive. Now, I have two screens going, which really makes my life good because... I've got my other screen cut into three screens. So I actually have four screens going and, and it helps me out a bit. But I can get into my Google Drive and to my Design 350 and then I'll be able to upload when I'm done. So I can go to my work and so there's all the stuff that I've done so far. And I'll put in my work. Let me open up a week two. There we go. And so I can put any work that I do in there today. So that's just a little file management stuff. Okay. So what are we supposed to do today? We're supposed to make a property line drawing. So let me go ahead and start a new drawing. So here I am. I'm in a new drawing. I've opened up AutoCAD. And it looks horrible. This is not how I work. So remember, you have to do all of your setup options. Each time you come in, it does not remember you. But I am going to do this all in 2D, so that part's fine. Uh, welcome in, JR. I have to get to you here. Hold on. There we go. Got you in, JR. Um, let me come help just a moment. Well, you can hear me from, well, let's see. 
Yeah, but you need to be able to see my screen. So just a moment. I'm going to pause the um, my speaker. All sorts of good stuff going on. There we go. Have you clicked on it yet? It should let you in. There it is. And now you're in. Okay, so we've got that. And now I'm going to go ahead. I set this up. I keep model space grid snap. I do dynamic input, ortho mode, polar tracking, isometric, no. Object snap tracking, yes. Object snap, yes. Line weight, yes. And then visibility, no. Auto scale, no. Annotation scale, no. Workspace, yes. Annotation, no. Isolate, no. That's just my setup. I don't care how you set up. Okay, so now the last thing is, I know I'm going to be drawing a property. And if I look over here I can see that you know I'm out there like 200 and some feet okay these are my X direction Y direction so I need my view to be about 200 feet since I'm gonna work in feet I need to set my units that's type units and it will be decimal feet. And I don't have surveyor's units or anything like that, so decimal degrees will be fine. I think I put it into surveyor's units um, in the video, so I'll do that. doesn't matter. And now I have to draw a line about 200 long. 200... And I can double-click my mouse wheel to get my access. So now, my view is probably going to do things okay. I'm pretty well set, so I can just delete that. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to need to do is actually draw lines from... And here we go again. I'm going to draw lines from my start point. Hi there, Eric. Good to have you on. I'll be just female. Are you done? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, you can see that this says all my measurements are from the zero, zero point and that the coordinates of the boundaries are at these points. So I'm going to draw from zero, zero to these points and I'll probably use a construction line for that. Now, the way I do that is I have, I use the design center, and I look at my open drawings, and I look in my, dim, in my layer template, and I look at my layers, and I go, well, what am I going to need? I need a construction, and I don't care how you do this, and I probably need a C prop. And I'll do a text. And maybe I'll do a thick and a thin, just because. Thick, thin, and maybe even a dimension. There we go. And now you'll see I have my layer. I don't care how you put those layers in there. You can do whatever you want with those layers. It does not matter at all. Okay? Okay. But now I can draw some lines, and I'm going to draw them on the construction layer. And this says draw a line from zero, 0, to 
66 comma 53. Do you guys remember that? How to do that coordinates, drawing to coordinates? I'm going to draw from a point, 0, 0, to another point that's 66 over and 53 up. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One is draw from 0, comma 0, to... Sixty six comma fifty three. Well, that's my first point. Sorry about that. So let me do that again. Draw a line from zero comma zero. And I could do it two ways. I can draw sixty six over and fifty three up and draw my line back. That's essentially what I did. I went 66 over and 53 up. Now on the next one, it says go to a point that is at 222, 53. So let me do that another way. So now I'm going to go from that same 0, 0, and I'm going to go from... 222 comma 53 and that's where my next boundary point is so I'm learning how to read this survey record where I have gotten data points for different rod points as I go Okay, and this is how you would do it if you did GPS. So my next line is from my start point to 222, comma, 201. And my last one is to... 66 comma 201 so those the end points of each line are a survey point that's what I did I've made survey points and that's why I did them on the construction line that's literally you're standing here with your survey tool and you've got a rod out there and you get those dimensions and, of course, you don't know how to get those dimensions yet, but somebody wrote them down for you on your survey record. So now we're drawing the results of a survey record. Okay? So I've, I've literally just drawn what I saw, but now I actually have to draw the boundary. Right? And that's just connecting the lines. So I'm going to do that on the C-prop layer, and I'm just going to connect my lines. One... Two, three, four. There we go. Now notice, remember the C prop layer had dashes and dots and things like that from when you took it before? And you don't see those here. That's because I'm zoomed so far out, I can't see them. We have AutoCAD set when it comes right out of the box that when you put it, in a viewport on a layout, it will scale your line types to look right. So I don't want to mess with it here. I'll mess with it later on. Okay? But now I need to see it. So I'm going to make a new viewport, a new layout. So there's my new layout, and I'm going to go to it. And I'm going to get rid of what's there. And I want this to be on an 11 by 17. I just think it'll look better. Do you guys remember how to do that? Change this? Okay, good. So I'm going to change my page setup manager to... I'm going to leave it as Adobe PDF. I'm going to go to grayscale. I always plot in grayscale or monochrome. And I want it to be... Architectural B will be okay. I can go just plain old 11 by 17 too. I saw that in here. 
I'll just make it 11 by 17. There we go. That looks right. Okay. So now I need a title block. Ah, where do I get title blocks? Well, hopefully you've got one. I can get, I can get that one. Okay, so that's in, if I go to my design center again and look at my blocks, there's a ton of them here that I can pull. Layout, architectural, border B. There we go. Oh, but guess what? Why is it so small? Any, any idea why it's so small? Because this is in feet and this is in inches and so it doesn't know what's going on. I have to scale that up by a factor of 12. I also put it on the wrong layer. That should be on my border layer. So I can scale that and, and I can do it any number of ways, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm just going to scale it by hand. Oh, wrong way. That's kind of weird. Oh, you're don't you have them? From your well, you have them in your old classes. I just pulled this from one of my old classes. So from 301, 302, 328, 325, 310, just find an old one from an old class. And, and I'm not too concerned about which one you use. Just, just, just find one that you did. When, when I want a specific one, I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, but there we go. So if you're not ready for that, that's okay. Just draw a square or something. Yeah, I'm sure you guys all got those somewhere, right? Just, just where are they and can I get them on? Yeah, right. So, so what I do is, is I'd put it up into the cloud for you or something like that. Um, uh, here's, uh, you know what, I'll bet you there's one, if you go into this one that says DT100 course, that's on the front page, there, there's one, TB11 by 17 ATT, I'll bet you that'll work. So there is one on the, uh, here's B sheet, that'll probably work, maybe. Any of those will work. Okay, so that's cool. So let me bring this back up. Now I'm going to do something very important right now. I've just done something good. So I'm going to do a save as just to make sure I've got this thing. Uh, here we go. Uh, not, no, I'm in the wrong one, 350. From lab. There we go. So now watch. I'm going to go on to my def points layer because I need to have this set up. And you go to layout... And this is all 2D, so I just need my regular rectangular viewport. Rectangular, click. And it'll auto-scale it in kind of close. And look, they showed up. So that's kind of cool. That's okay, I'm videoing it. I'll come through and help, help you out as we go. So just put the viewport on there. Don't worry about your title block right now. 
put a viewport on there. But wasn't that cool how it did that? Now I'm going to show you a couple of new cool things that maybe you've done before and maybe you haven't. So if I click it into model, what shows up over here is my scale factor for this. And I want that to be something normal. And I see that's very close to 0.05, which is a 1 to 20 scale. Now I've got a real scale. And I can bring it, pan it down so it's kind of in the middle. And then I can lock. So those are just some good things to do. The other thing I'm going to do here that you may not have seen is I'm going to go back to my home and I'm still in the model. And I'm going to take these construction lines and I'm going to freeze them in this viewport. So they're still going to show in my model because I want them there. I want to know. I want to see them. But I don't want to see them in this. Now, I didn't do that. I, f I just turned them off in my video demo because I did the most basic video demo I could think of. But here I'm doing something new. Maybe. Is this new for you guys? Is, is this new for anybody? Could be. Okay, so that's cool. And then I'm going to go back to my piece of paper. So now I'll show you why that's cool. I'm going to go back to my model. These are still there. I go to my sheet and they're not. So that's really good. That was pretty slick, wasn't it? Okay, so here I am. In my layout, I go to the model view of the um, viewport. And then I go up to my layer properties. And I look at the construction layer. And I do, there's a new, a new thing in here that looks like a piece of paper. And I can freeze in current viewport. And it only does it there. That is really neato, isn't it? And now the rest of it is just getting some stuff done. So I need to put some dimensions on here. Well, one another thing I, I didn't do in the, in the video was put the donuts on. So let me put a donut. And my inside diameter will be zero. And my outside, probably about 3 16 and remember, there's a donut on each little corner when you do these. Well, it just needs to look good. I did zero and three sixteenths. Uh, so, Eric, no. All of this works on every... Uh, version of AutoCAD back to 2018. So you're fine on the older version. No problem at all. Okay, so now I need to figure out this length. So I can either do math. I know in the X direction from one point to the next is 222 minus 66. So I can figure that out. And that's cool. But I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to use the DIST. Oops, i got to be over here. DIST command. And I'm going to go from the end point. Now be sure that you get the end point of the line and not the center of your donut. If you get the center of your donut, you're measuring on the piece of paper. And it's going to be off. I want from end point to end point. And it tells me it's 156 at an angle east. 156 angle east. And if you can't remember that, 
then you have to write it down somewhere. 156 angle east, due east. 156 due east. So that's text. DT, middle center, right here. My height will be 1 8. And it's going east. That's good. So 156 feet due east. There. That's kind of cool. Now, I also know these are, I, I just saw this is, this is even, okay? Okay. So I can just copy this up. And remember, I always go in the direction that I did my survey. So that was due east, due north, due west. I do the one called D-I-S-T. And so I'll do it again on this one. D-I-S-T from this endpoint to... I got to get it to hit an endpoint. I do right-click. 148 due north. Now watch. I'm going to do middle center right here. It's going to rotate north and 146 feet due north. And you can do all sorts of work to make these better. But then, you know, I, I happen to know that this is a rectangle, so I don't have to measure the other side. But I do know that when I drew it, I went from here down to here, so that's going to be due south. And then I'm going to go find I'm going to find my data and then I'm going to snip it and put it in there. Oh, I have to sign in, right? You guys There we go. That's better. So now I can take a snip of this. And I can either just put in the data itself. Whoop. I didn't get my data, did I? I'll do the clipboard paste. There we go. And that's that's what I'm looking for. 
I don't need you to fill out the title block this week. Just get me something like that that I can that I can check and see. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So now I'll do a save. I can do a print from anywhere. You can figure out how to do your printing. Adobe PDF, Grayscale, Plot Preview. There it is. Got it. Piece of cake. So let me go ahead and print that. It'll ask me where to put it. And that's my second one that I did. And they're all done essentially just like that. Okay, so there we go. Let me rotate that thing maybe. Where's my rotate button? Where's my make smaller? There we go. And so so there's my there's my work. Now, of course, I would want to take that and put it into my Google Drive. So I would want to take both of those into my Google Drive. I want I want my completed drawing from lab and I want my PDF. Okay, and you'll do that for each one of those. Now, as you get going, my suspicion is that you know, once you got your title block, once you got your layers, once you've got all that kind of stuff, it becomes very quick. You can do these all in one drawing and just give different layouts if you like. You do not need to make a separate drawing, but each one gets output on a separate um, a separate sheet. Okay, so that's the goal of the lab this week. Okay, and I believe that each one will end up taking you 15 to 20 minutes once you get going. And so you can just cruise it through. Hot dog, huh? Cool. So that is the lab for today. Um, if you're online, let me ask you, if you're online, do you have any questions right now? I'm just going to watch the video since I did miss the first 20 minutes. I apologize. My apologies. Um, but yeah, just, just got to shake off the cobwebs. I haven't been on here as much lately. So, yep. and so there's a couple of things I forgot for sure. Um, but I can just watch what you did. And that's how I learned last time. Right. So. Now, <laughs> now, now, here's the thing, Eric. Um, you may be more comfortable in Dynascape or something like that. And you're welcome to mm. do it. You don't have to use AutoCAD. Um, especially if you're more familiar with one of the other programs. Okay. So you're, you're welcome to use uh, Dynascape or, you know, some other program if you feel like it, so long as you can make it kind of look like that. Right? It's I really do. I really like AutoCAD uh, okay, and Dynas I like Dynascape too, but I want to. I really want to get AutoCAD down, so okay. I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. Okay. I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So that's all cool. Um, and yeah. and this, this is, is sort of just a redo of the um, of uh, the, the video, video that I already posted posted with just a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Nick, yeah. what do you got? I have to ask you the same question again. What was that distance tool called again? I, I typed in D-I-S-T. Was that it? Okay, I wasn't, I wasn't able, able to hear, to hear that, that very well. well. So I'll just come over. That's why I wasn't able to hear it. Okay, so... Next one. 
because people can hear me. So I need to get the distance again. I was able to get it the first time, but I completely blanked out. And so what okay. was the command D again? D-I-S-T. Okay, that's what I thought. I appreciate it. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I'll I'll note that we're still recording. So I'll go ahead and note that that uh, the way I got the layers in was just one of the ways that I often do it. <clears throat> I have a bunch of drawings that I use as kind of template drawings that have tons of stuff in it. I've got layers, dim styles title blocks, uh, all sorts of stuff already. And so I just open one of those up and use the design center of open drawings and look at them. But you can do it any way you want. You can go into your layer properties and create new layers or open up a drawing that already has them in it and save it as a new one. Um, those are all up to you, and I tend not to teach uh, that in this course unless you can't figure out how to do it. I want to teach how to how to make a good-looking drawing, and this has gotten started as a good-looking drawing. Now, this I might put on a different layer. I'll put that one on an image layer, which I don't have right now. So I will, I'll come in and I'll make a new layer called image. And I'll, I'll make it black, it doesn't matter. And um, I can do a couple of things then with this. Let's see if I can look at its properties. I can do some transparency on it so that it doesn't stick out quite as much. So that's also nice looking where it doesn't jump out at you, but it's very big. Or I can just turn that layer on and off. I thought I put it on the image layer. There we go so that it's still there, but I can get to it. So these are all just little tricks that you can do. Other things that we will work on in the future to finish this drawing up is it would need a north arrow and it would need a, an actual scale drawn in model space to help out, okay? So those are two things that are missing. Um, also, some sort of property identification, area, perimeter, things like that. But this is a good start for you to, as, as uh, Eric was saying, shake the cobwebs out. Okay, so Eric, uh, didn't save pictures. So, so do know that if you're in VMware... What you do on your computer isn't accessible on VMware. So you may have to do some of that. What I like to do is get everything onto Google Drive into one spot and then download it at the beginning of my project. So that's where 
you'll see that I've got my templates already and and they're they're in I can find them right I can go to here and I can go to my ones from the summer and find stuff and so I've got things on my personal drive and that's where I would put the stuff so that you can always you know here's my title block Here's my image folder. Here's this. Here's that. Like, here's my OBS images. Things like that. Does that, does that make sense, Eric? So if I've got it on my other computer over here, I'm not going to have access on my VMware. VMware does not talk to your host computer. If you're doing it through the web browser. Yeah. Okay, so you're not using VMware. So you just have to go find it. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm using, I have a Mac, but I also have it set up to where I can use it as a PC as well. So I have switched back and forth a couple times. Okay. I'm thinking maybe that, that could be it. Okay. If not, I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to yeah. be somewhere. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, good luck with that. That's all your good work you get to do of find where everything. The other thing you can do is throw everything onto a USB and and just have access to that USB all the time. Yeah, I got to reorganize again. No, no worries. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, there we go. Any other questions? Leah, are you doing okay on this? I think so. Everything seems pretty straightforward. I think it's a little bit different than some of the commands I've used in the past to do the property lines, but um, it was just like Eric was saying, just kind of dusting up the cobwebs and, yeah. and I think the more, the more I do the, you know, repetitive and over and over and stuff, I right. think I'll be able to get it down. Okay, good. So then here's the trick is I don't care what you use to get it done so long as each line truly your microphone is muted thank you i don't care which um which way you actually go so long as your that you can get the correct dimensions out for instance this one says it is 156 long so you can use any program so long as it is truly drawn to scale and that your presentation is also drawn at some sort of reasonable scale too. So like I'd come in here and go ATT, edit, pick my block, class number and name, DESGN 350. Today is uh, And here's where I got my 1 equals 20. There. And those should all be caps, but... And that's... And again, I don't care how you do that either. And you could even, if you felt like it, put this on an 8.5 an by 11 and have a different scale. Okay? But to be a full, complete drawing later on... We would need a north arrow, uh, a scale, and a little bit of data about the property. But we're not doing that this week. Cool? So six of these to do. Piece of cake, right? No problemo. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the OBS, the, uh, the recording.